The Secrets of Freemasonry, an audiobook by Shakim Ra, originally written by Elijah Muhammad in 1967. Chapter 1 A True Mason. Assalamu alaikum. I am Elijah Muhammad, the preacher of freedom, justice, and equality. To you, my dear people, who have been in the Western Hemisphere, in America, for 400 long years, and now the day has arrived that you must turn to your own, your own God, and your own people, that you may be able to see the hereafter. What is the hereafter? The hereafter means after the Holy War, or after Armageddon, or after the war between Satan and Almighty God. This is what's meant when we say the hereafter. It means after the war between right and wrong has been fought, this war is often called a war between God and the devil. The devil seeks to hold supremacy over God since he has ruled the people for six thousand years. He desires to continue holding his place as a ruler of the people and seeks to bring before the people every opposition that he possibly can to destroy their hearts and their minds toward the worship and obedience to Almighty God Allah. Here in the Western Hemisphere, in America, where there are 22 million original black people living whose fathers suffered slavery for around 300 long years, this enslavement of our fathers has caused us to believe in the enemy or adversary of God, the real devil himself. It is hard today to get our people to disbelieve in the devil and believe in Almighty God because they never knew anything of God or the devil. Only by the teachings of the slave master and the slave master was always careful to conceal himself so that they might not know who he is. Therefore, it was impossible for them to learn who was God and who was the devil. These are really two gods. The devil is a God himself, as mentioned by Jesus in the New Testament, that he is the God of this world, the prince of the power of hell. This is true that the devil has been the ruler for 6,000 years and God of this world. This world means the world of the devil. Under his rule, the people forgot the real true God and the way to that true God because he will not teach the people. Again, the parable of the vine or the olive tree, pardon me, the fig tree, that Jesus, as the book says, cursed, was also a sign of this world that this world has never produced converts to the will of Almighty God Allah. Never has any so-called American Negro been taught by white people to believe in Almighty God Allah and its true religion Islam. Only in higher organizations, or we say masonry, in the Masonics, there is a little teaching at the top, mostly of this particular order that mentions the teachings of the Almighty God Allah. But you have to pay a lot of money to become a 33rd degree Mason. Therefore, you are an absolute victim as Isaiah teaches you that you buy that which does not bring you any gain. To buy that kind of teaching does not gain you the hereafter. We must have something that is pure. A Mason cannot be a good Mason unless he knows the Holy Quran and follows his teaching. This book is the only book that will make a true Mason. The Bible won't make you a true one. I say if you are a true Muslim friend, then all right, let's have it in the open and not in the secret. These things I warn you who are listening and reading that the time is right and is at hand, that everything, everything of good or bad must be made known. We are living in the end of the world, the judgment of this world. These are the days of the judgment mentioned in the Bible as in the days of the judgment or in the days of the resurrection of the dead. These days represent years and not just little 24 hour days as we know them today, but they mean years. In the years of the judgment or the resurrection of the dead, we are in those days now. 
the coming of Allah and the teachings of Islam to we who have been lost from our kind, native land and our country for the past 400 years mean the judgment. God doesn't come until the judgment or until the end of the world of Satan. As you have it written in the Bible, prophesied throughout the Bible, and also absolutely mentioned in Thessalonians, that God comes after the working of Satan, the devil. And after he has done all that he possibly can do of evil, then God comes after allowing him to go to the poor or giving him the freedom to try and take all the people with him to hell, if possible. These are the days now that we are living in. I want you to understand me, dear people. You are not in the actual way of the truth. You have not actually believed it. Your time now has come that even if you would just turn to Almighty God, you would enjoy salvation or heaven in this world and in the hereafter, you are assured of the heaven. But even in this life, God gives the righteous peace of mind and contentment. He is the protector of the righteous after he makes his appearance and religion that the judgment will come and there will be a great separation at the judgment. This is true, but you don't believe that you are living in this time, that there is a great separation now in the workings. When you first heard that there was someone in your midst giving names similar to foreign names or Indian names, such as Karim, Biad, Muhammad, Farrakhan, Hassan, Hasim, Ali, and many names that you now hear being given to your own people and they being called by these names, you are so dead to the knowledge of self, kind, truth, and the true God that you not only do not pay any attention to them, but even make fun of these names because you never heard of these names before. Instead of grabbing a dictionary to see what certain names mean, you're consequently called foolish or fools in the Bible and the Holy Quran. You will learn that these names mean good names of God. As mentioned in mostly all the teachings of religion, God has 99 names and the 100th is Allah, which means all the names of good and all who know these names will be saved. These people, it is true if they hold fast and do not lose their salvation, by hating to hear the real truth of them, they will be removed out of the area where there will be war between God and the devil. It's only the people who oppose God that God will fight and bring to a nut. It is not the people who do not oppose God and do not teach each other to oppose him, but it is that vicious and evil person who teaches against the belief in the Almighty God and teaches other people to hate those who believe in the Almighty God, Allah. These are the people who receive severe judgments of God. And I warn you, my people, since I see that you don't understand too well, that you should come to the knowledge of the truth. Which one will survive the war of Armageddon, which is now taking place? We're going into that war and we're in it now, this very minute. If you believe Christianity, which has mistreated you and hung you on trees, then I think you should look at this and think well. If a murderer, will survive peace, which we have experienced all our lives. The heavens do not give us no trouble, but we disobey the laws, rules of the heavens, which obeys the creator. The star and the moon and the sun obey the law of its creator. But this stuff over here, stars and stripes, to our left is the made up of an enemy against that to our right. He is opposed to the laws that govern that which he cannot do without himself. He cannot find no place to live, but in the peaceful kingdom of the universe. Regardless to how he boasts, he can't build one outside of it. Let him try and build a universe, then he can be independent of ours. Since he was not able to build him a universe, then obey the laws of ours. That he can't do because one of our black scientists, a little over 6,600 years ago, made him according to his wish. He didn't make him according to our wish. He made him according to his wish. This troublemaker was made of the nature of making trouble. When his God made him, he made him and he said to him, after he had made him, go to now and make all of the mischief that you can before the coming of the Mahdi. Who is the Mahdi? 
He is the God we call Allah and we call him other names, but he is the one also that is referred to as the son of man in the Bible that will come. Mahdi means a name of self-independence, the man who doesn't rely on others. He's self-independent and he's one that is coming in the last day to bring about the judgment of the made man. And he's referred to by many as being the son of man. The son of man is that man who was given authority and power by God to carry out his judgment upon the people. That's what the son of man does. It goes on also for the Mahdi having to be born out of his nation by a woman that is not of his nation. But the man that produced the child that she gave birth to was of us, black man. He married her to get an unlike child so that he could send that child among our people and his people to produce a ruler of us who were lost among the unalike people. The man he made from among his people and the enemy was and is the God of the judgment and destruction of the unalike people who has attracted us for these last 6,000 years to follow them. Unalike is the white people. They are unlike us and we are not like them and they are not like us, only in the form of a man and not by nature. That's why they call him mankind, because he's just a kind of like the real man, but he's not a real one. God is able to fulfill his promises to us. He has come and offered you that flag on the right, the sun, moon, and stars, which means that it is time now to rule your own. That's your own, and he has offered it to us. We have a song we sing of that beauty like this. Allah has given to us our own, the sun, the moon, and star for a flag. I don't think you will find the white people running all over the earth with that on their head because they know better. They don't have part in it. They have time in it, but not part of the creation. When you ask the white man about his secret order called masonry or masonics, he wants you to answer and tells you that you were not made in that, but you were born in that. That is true. We are born Muslims. It cannot be accepted by saying I was made a Muslim. We were created Muslims. Islam is not a religion. We call it a religion, but it's not a religion because it is the nature of us. Therefore, the nature of us can't be called a religion. That's why the 30th chapter and the 30th verse of the Holy Quran teaches you that Islam is not a religion, but it's the nature in which we were born. If you go to higher masonry, they will ask you, were you made a mason? And you better not tell them that you were made one. You've got to tell them that you have always been that. The Holy Quran is a true and righteous book all over the 196,940,000 square miles of earth and water. It's a true book. This is the book you should try and study. Don't go get a sales translation. Don't get no missionary of white people's translation of the Holy Quran to look for truth. They will deceive you. They don't want you to be Muslims. As you have proof of that today, you'll be persecuted. You'll be sent to prison again and again for accepting Islam. That's the truth. Of course, you go for accepting Christianity, as I told you. They, by nature, are to be made against you. You could be their best follower. That don't make any difference. As long as you're a black man, that's it. They are your enemy. The Bible and the Holy Quran is referring to you and me if we sum up the teachings of all three scriptures, the Torah, the Gospel, and the Holy Quran, and they all refer to you and I. Using other people's history to teach you of your own. Think over it, my friend. The poor lost member of the aboriginal black nation has now been found and is now guided by God himself so that the Bible's prophecy may be fulfilled wherein it says in Ezekiel I will go after them I will search for them until I have found them I will free them right even I myself I will go and search for them a parable was made of Solomon wherein the great architect got killed after building a beautiful temple here, Solomon symbolically acts as the God. He sends searchers for him to find where he had fallen dead at. The searchers, 
when they returned said we found him but we could not raise him he was so rotten that his flesh slipped off his bones if we tried to raise him he had been dead a long time nevertheless we found a sign of life from his grave growing up from his grave we see a sign of life the bible says though dead but yet shall he live you must know the truth he's dead but yet he shall live again those that die in the lord shall live again his force says the spirit the spirit of prophecy is referring to a people who will lose the knowledge of themselves and of their god but don't consider them to be absolutely hopeless for they will live again they will live again how was he killed? The enemy killed him by knocking him in his head. So if he was struck in the head, this is the real place to kill the man. Solomon said, I will go and see if I can help you raise him. He went himself to show them how to get a hold of a dead man. Regardless of how secret you made it, it is the truth. It symbolizes the real people of today. He showed the people how to raise this man, how to take hold of the dead. After they had taken him up out of the grave, he directed that the dead man be buried under the temple. Though taken east, they found him west. I say to you, my friends, many have attempted to try to solve your problems. Many have come here trying to raise you. You were too dead here. They couldn't raise you, but now the father has come the king of peace has come and he has taught me elijah muhammad how to get a hold of you he said to me you must rise for the time is at hand you must rise it is written look in your own bible it is time the bible teaches you itself that it is time that the dead should arise stand him up put him on the square turn his face back to his people and to his native land then he will be upright then he will be forever successful from then on take him up while they were searching for the body they heard someone in the bushes groaning those who had killed that fine architect was groaning and moaning they were in agony over committing such evil woe to me that i have ever brought such man here i'm sorry i'm sorry but if your problems are not solved, America will say, Woe to us forever bringing such people as this to us and for our evils that we have did against them. I will tell you of that which I know for myself. I have had priests come to me and say, I'm sorry. He said, We feel that we have mistreated you all and we would like to do something about it. But the time is right that you must rise. Poor Marcus Garvey, a hard-working man. He wanted to see you into your own, trying to buy ships to take you back to your own, which wasn't necessary. And if you're not giving up and put back into your own land and among your own people, your stay here will not be doing any good to America. No, no, no. And the wise man of America knows that, for God himself has found you, and God himself is after you, and he's not going to let America rest, nor will he let you rest until he has put you back into your rightful place. Go after your own. Seek your own God. Seek your own religion, the religion of peace. You are a most beloved people. God just loves you because you are nothing, and he wants to make something out of you. It is not that you are so great. No, you're nothing. It is not that you are so good. No, you are evil yourself, but God just wants to fulfill that which he put into the mouth of his prophet, that he would come after you after 400 years of enslavement, and he would take you back and put you in your own native land. The world knows that you are the only people that don't know it, but I'm telling you, once I was a Mason too, until I became a Muslim, I was a Mason. You must remember that the Holy Quran teaches that a Muslim or Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. You must remember the scripture or the rituals that they use concerning a lost architect. Think over it. If we are studying that, 
and learn what it means and who it actually really is. Then I say you are wise. You must remember, my friend, that all these things until now have come to light. There is a prophecy in the Bible that he, meaning God, will send his angels, send his people from the east to gather you from the west. A savior has been born. I will go after him, even I. I will search for him until I find him. I find him. I'm going to take him back to his own people. He reached out and made a prophecy against the fall of Israel. I'm going to plant it on the hills, on the mountains of Israel. Don't look for earth. It's the rulers and the authority of that nation, the mountains of Israel. Israel was voted up as rulers of the people. I'm going to mount you and make you the ruler of self and others. I'm going to search for them. They have to be searched for. Why? An enemy has them and the enemy is hiding them. The enemy calls them by his name. They don't know me. They are not wise as a donkey. The donkey knows his master, but my people do not know me. Think over it. I'm going to search for them for an enemy has them and an enemy is hiding them. They don't know me because the enemy didn't teach them of me. They didn't go into their own people's names. They didn't pray the prayer of their people. They don't turn their faces toward the east. They don't spread out their hands to me as I teach them. I must go after them. I must save them from such people. What are we going to do with such people? I'm going to turn them over to their own kind. I'm going to choose them. They're going to be my people. I'm going to make for myself a nation. Who could or who should be any happier than you or me that a savior was designed to come to save us? What are we in trouble with? The time has come as I give it to Abraham that I'm going to judge that people where they have been who kept us as slaves for 400 years. I'm going after them. I'm going to free them again and again and I'm going to judge that people. I'm going to announce judgment and death to them because they have destroyed my people. They have robbed them. They have spoiled them. They have blinded them. They can't see all the way. It is time that you wake up. It is time that you wake up. The Secrets of Freemasonry Originally written by Elijah Muhammad in 1967 An audiobook documentary by Shakim Ra Provided to the public by Amin Ra University Stop going down to the beer garden Drinking your stomach full of intoxicating beer Going on cutting the silly act Stop ordering hot liquids to drink to make yourself a worse fool. Stop taking your hard-earned dollars, wasting them up into liquor and beer that will turn you crazy and make you throw all of your money out into the streets and right back into the hand of the thief. Stop trying to buy expensive cars with only $50 a week income or $75 a week income and the car note is $75 a month or $100 a month and you don't make but 50 or 75 a week and your house rent, your clothes, your food, your gas that you have to buy which costs you 30 or 35 cents a gallon or more. You don't think of that. My friend, you are too extravagant with such little you are like the book says, you are a prodigal son. Prodigal son means something that is extravagant and wasteful. We are too wasteful with nothing, no land whatsoever. You don't have no home here. Millions of us here don't even own enough land to produce enough food to feed us in peace. That's right. We don't own enough land to produce enough food to feed 17 million mouths with black eyed peas. And yet we are so rich that if we are given $75 a week or $50 a week, we can buy $5,000 Cadillacs and sleep in it at night. We are too rich. We are too wasteful. We are too ignorant. 
I say, my friend, wake up. We can't be satisfied with a $50 suit if the merchant shows us a $105 or $110 suit. If he says that we can pay little on it at a week or so, okay. We sell our lives as a slave for a $110 or $150 suit when we could have bought three or four suits for that. No, my friend, that is wrong. We will never be anybody like that. I don't care if you go to paradise. You could soon break paradise if you're going to live like that. Don't be like that. You are fascinated by the wealth of the rich man. These people are rich. They own the country. They own the money. They own the house you live in. They make the shoes you wear. They make the socks you wear. They make the pants you wear, the shirt you wear, the tie you put on your neck. They make the hat you put on your head. You sit down and don't make nothing. They sawed and built your home, saw the timber. They go and dig mud and burn brick to build you a home and you pay them for it. You could do a little of that. Go buy you some muddy land, dig up some mud, make you some bricks yourself. They teach you how to make a brick but you're too rich. So let them make it and I'll pay 10 or 15 cents a brick for it. You have too much money. Your roof is falling in. You won't go up there and patch it. Let him patch it. That's no good. Where are you going to build a nation out of yourself being that lazy? We are actually too lazy to do anything for ourselves and yet say you don't build me a house you don't patch my roof he don't put a lock on my door man can't you do something for yourself we must find our own faults before we pile too many on the other fellow we know the other fellow is guilty of the many things that he should not have done that he did do Yet you and I are not so innocent ourselves. We are also guilty for not doing for self. Get $10,000, sit down and play it on the horses like a millionaire. That's a millionaire's way. He doesn't have nothing to do with his money. He sits there and bets on racing horses out there to see which one runs the fastest. He got money to throw away. Here, you come up with 10 cent, wanting to put it on the line. You lose your dime, that's all of it. But if he loses $10,000, he has 10,000 more. It's a sin. Let's get together and do something about it. I'm happy to say that he has been found due west. He must be restored. He must be taken back in the temple of his own, the temple that he was the architect of, he must be carried home. So I'm happy to say to you that all of these things is now come true in your own history. You are the answer to it all. You are Hiram Abif yourself. Yes, sir, you are the one. You are the one that has been hit in the head and it takes a long time for the head to heal. You are the one. You are the one that needs to be stood up. I say, my friend, you are the one that has the blindfold on. You are the one that ought to be crying for light and more light, but you are not. You're reaching for the blindfold. Stand up, my friend, for self and no that you're in the day that you must be separated from the people that you have known for the last 400 years. God does not lie. He does not allow his prophets to lie. It is written and it must be fulfilled. You must go back to your own. I think the white people here have done a great thing for you and I. They have not driven you out of the country. They have tried to give you jobs. They have tried to feed you when you didn't have nothing to do. Is that right? 
That's the truth. Give credit where it's due. They're still trying to feed you and you're out of work today. Look at the unemployment line around on the streets. They are out there now by the hundreds, is that right? Don't have no work to do, but you won't go to your own. It is like the book said Lazarus was, he just wouldn't leave the rich man's gate. He stayed there until the rich man died himself. I say, my friend, I have God on my side to bring you into a better condition. I have God on my side to bring you into a land of your own, a home of your own, where you won't be giving other people a headache in their home and where you won't have a headache trying to find a home when there is no home for you. This is the end of the white man's world. It could be the end of the black man's world if he wants to sit down and do nothing naturally you will soon come to an end if you don't do something for yourself that is if no one else is not doing it for you as i told you three or four years ago in the paper that you cannot always depend on the white people to carry you but you didn't believe it now the day is fast coming that he's about to tell you he will soon tell you I just can't carry you that's all don't have nothing more for you to do and if he tells you that what can you say well I helped make the bread for you now you don't want to give me none but brother if he tells you to go for yourself that you are free now get on out and look over this earth for living for yourself. Can you blame him? Will you blame an old mule that you open the lock gate and tell that mule, there is green grass out there, mule, go eat, help yourself. And that mule will not go out to that lot to eat, but still stand there licking. It will make you angry with the mule. Chapter four. Elijah's light is what you crave and seek. In reading a book in Washington Congressional Library on ancient masonry, I had to laugh sometimes to see how we have been fooled. And now you'll get their highest degree in that order that no white man would ever teach you. If we bring to you, I'm talking about the disbelievers and the hypocrites, if we bring to you that flag and tell you that it is our sign or emblem you that have studied degrees and masonry should not hesitate to come over because we give you more than what that devil has given you the brothers fruit of islam foi are men who have learned more about masonry than you your masonry has included the history of your slavery but you do not know it your first three degrees take you into your slavery. Those three degrees there, they are the answer to your slavery if you understand, but not understanding them as the white man would not teach you the theology inside of it, it makes you dumb to even that which you actually own. I don't like to call you such names, but it's an easy answer to the truth of it. You look the ignorant among you look at that flag of islam and laugh at it because he's ignorant of the truth of it and he doesn't know what he's doing he'll smile at his old stars and stripes he calls it old glory if i were you i change the name and say it's old hell i'm positive that if you will let me teach you You'll go out sticking out your little chest. It will make you feel like sticking your chest out. But I say, don't act proud. Be humble and yet commanding. If we bring to you the sun, moon, and star, and you laugh at it, criticize it, and say you don't want it, and say that you'd rather have a made square of the devil and that that's enough for you to get by, you're only wishing 
to become recognized by the devil, not by you and your people. That is why you go and join up with him in every society that you think he will let you in. You want to be his equal. You want to be recognized and you want to be respected by him. He didn't make his society or societies to make you his equal. He robbed you of money to be called one of them. He doesn't like to call you a brother in no society. Now, before we will tell him that we will accept him calling us brothers, he tries to call us brothers. Many white people out there call us brothers or refer to us as the brothers because we have the truth and the right act in our right position of the square. We don't do this for form or fashion. No, it is the truth. If we say that we are on the square with you, that doesn't mean we're just saying that because the sign is a square. No, we say that because we are the square ourselves, not that we make a sign to go by. We are the square and we are the star and we are the moon. While you do these things according to his teaching, just for the respect of the whites who are one, they are getting recognition of it in America and in Australia and into Europe. This is just an act that they have for you to buy, to get among them and Freemasonry even in itself does not take you any further than Australia and into Europe but this flag of Islam takes you all over the earth. I want you to wake up and know yourself to be people of the first order, not of the last order, but of the first order. We are to respect each other as brothers and sisters and not as enemies. We are to respect our woman as our mother I say, my friend, this means that we have to love each other. We can't do these things if we hate each other. That's why we are very careful with you. The devil has put poison in your mind against self and love of yourself for him, hoping you can be like him, hope that you don't be like him. These people were made for hellfire. They were made only to live to a certain time. He tells them, he tells us himself, some places he goes that the children of the natives see him and say, there goes a foreign devil. They know him better than you. A real devil is one that is made by nature of evil. His very nature, the material which he's made. I do not use the word create because he is not from the creation. He's a made man that our scientist Yakub made here 6,000 years ago. We however, have been on this earth ever since it was created and before that. Black man, remember, you are the father of creation. Black man, remember that no white man can dispute with the one who said it, Elijah. He can't dispute with me. I am a God taught man. I am a God raised man. I wear this on my head. Sun, moon and star. But we tell the white man to wear it publicly, but once a year. You know why he can't wear it over once a year? Because he has nothing to do with the making of this. The black man made this fez. What I mean, the sun, moon, and star. The white man knows nothing about the creation of such planets. This is why I want you to teach. And I want to teach you the theology of this. Many things in the universe, many things on earth of human beings and of life of any kind. I'm here to tell you what Allah has taught me of it, not what I know. It is Allah, the one who has taught me, and I don't think you will be able to make him out to be as telling anything other than the truth. 